One cheeky topic the examiners love is when there's multiples or additions to the expected value or the variance. And there's a couple of simple rules you need to remember and, and if you stick to them, you'll be absolutely fine, guaranteed good marks. So the general rule is if you have a multiple of the x, that means you simply multiply the expected value by that amount. That makes sense because if you times all the values by say 3, you'd expect the overall answer to go up by times by 3, scale factor 3. Same thing, if you add a certain number to each of the values, you'd expect the overall answer to go up, the expected value to go up by that number. So for expected value, for e of x, if there's a multiple, you simply multiply the expected value. If there's an addition or a minus, you simply add or minus that number. Variance is a bit different. Variance is a measure of spread, not so much an expected value as a measure of spread. Now what happens if you think of a scatter diagram and you think about how spread out they are in the standard deviation for example, if you moved all the values up by a number like 10, that wouldn't actually change how spread out the values are. It would simply just move them all up by 10. They'd still be the same amount of spread out as they were before. And that's why with an addition or a subtraction with variance, that has no effect to the actual variance. And that's a trick they will commonly try and test you on. If there's an addition here or subtraction, then it has no effect. If there's a multiplication, because variance is standard deviation squared, that will actually have a squared effect on the variance. It's not just if you times the variance by 4, here inside the brackets or times all the x values I should say by 4 then the variance would get times by 4. No, it would be times by 16 a squared. Let's use these rules to work out the answers to these questions. A random variable x has expected value of 4 and variance of 3. Find the expected value of 3x. Well with expected value it's fairly simple if the x's are times by 3 the answers are times by 3. 4 times 3 is 12. What about x minus 2? Again, with expected value, it's very simple, so you just take away 2 from the expected value. 4 take away 2 is 2. With variance, it's a bit different. So if there's a multiple of variance inside the brackets, then you need to square that and then times the variance by that. So here, the value of x is times by 3. So that means we actually need to times our variance by 9, 3 squared, not just by 3. So if our variance is 3 up here, we would times this by 9. We wouldn't just times by 3. 3 times 9 is 27. What, about, what happens if we take away 2? We take away 2 from the variance, right? No. Remember, when there's an add or minus, that has no effect on the variance. So the variance would stay at 3. Now the interesting thing about this that they're testing is whether you remember the formula for variance, which if you don't is up here. The variance, which we know from this question is 3, is equal to e of x squared, which is what they want for question e, e of x squared minus e of x squared which is different, minus e of x squared. It's very important the difference between those two things. e of x, we've been told in the question, is 4. So e of x squared is 16, which is not the same thing as e of x squared. So 3 equals e of x squared, which is what we're trying to find out, take away 16, which is 4 squared, because the e of x is 4. Add 16 to both sides, 19 is the answer for e of x squared. A final trick to know is if there is a discrete uniform distribution. That basically means if all the probabilities are the same as each other. Like a die or a dice, basically the chance of getting each total is one sixth. What you can do then 
is use these two formulas as a shortcut for working out expected value and variance. Now in another video we might do the proof of these two formulas but for now it's just good to know that if it's a uniform distribution and that means all the probabilities are the same which is quite rare but it will occasionally come up you can use this shortcut to work out expected value and variance. But even if you don't use a shortcut, you now know what to do to work out each of those two things.